overstating things, or we feel bitter. The end result is, especially in the terms of bitterness, it envelops us uh, and it has potential to color the way we perceive our world. It can affect other relationships. And we have seen bitter people. And this is what I also know. You develop that bitterness at a young age, you go into old age bitter. It doesn't get better. Um, in relationships, resentments can eventually lead to a feeling of contempt which destroys the relationship. Let me tell you a story, um, and it's one, I'll tell you, I think it really <coughs> changed my life. It was a small incident, and it has to do with resentments. I, uh, this was 24, 25 years ago, and I was single, and I was dating a man who eventually became my husband. Um, and it was a Saturday, and I was going to stop by his, uh, his place, and we were going to go to the movies. So when I, um, when I walked in, the door was open, um, and I sort of walked in, and he was sitting on the couch, and he was reading the paper when I walked in. So I bent over to kiss him hello, and as I did, he took the paper and he turned away from me. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is cute. I've just been working, I come over here, we're gonna go out, and he didn't even pay attention to me. He turns away from me. So I went and sat down on the couch, and I'm very quiet, so now I'm pouting. And he says, is something wrong? He looked at me, is something wrong? And of course I said, no. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, okay, you have married the potential of ruining this evening. You're gonna sit and talk, he's then gonna get upset. He doesn't know what you're upset about. And this is, this is not gonna be a fun night. So I said, um, you know, you just asked me so, uh, whether I, uh, something was wrong and I lied to you. Yeah, something's wrong. Uh, and what is wrong is, I said, let me show you. So I got up, walked around, turned, came in just the way I had, came toward him, came toward him just the way I had when I came in the, in the room. I bent over and I said, this is what you did. You took the paper and you turned away from me. And as though I weren't even here. He says, oh my God, I have no idea. Mary, I would never have done that to you. Can you feel all of a sudden now I'm thinking, <laughs> I could have ruined the evening. So what happened after that, and I knew enough, I knew enough to think, I had been in one marriage where there were tons of resentment, and I wasn't gonna do this one again. So what I, eventually we talked about is, and what I said to him was, um, if this relationship continues and we did get married, then I can never resent you. But that means that if I'm not going to resent you, I have to address things. I have to tell you what's going on with me. So we were married 22 years ago. <laughs> and I will say to you that it has been a marriage without resentments. As I said earlier, resentments lead to contempt. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever heard of John and Julie Gottman. John Gottman does a lot of marriage work. And Gottman says it's the four forces of the apocalypse, and that's those are the four things that will destroy relationships. I think it's defensiveness, blaming, uh, it, is re it is contempt, um, and the... Still long. Still long. Right, thank you. Contempt will destroy the relationship. So, let's talk about how does one learn how to forgive. We know we are called to love, and I believe that one. Tonight, I'm not going to tell you anything I don't believe. I really believe we are called to love. But how does one come to love another when we struggle with forgiveness? You see, the thing is that we have to be really honest with our feelings. It's not about just mouthing words. What are those steps that, that lead to forgiveness? First of all, it is a process. And it can be a very long process. And I mean a long process. Unfortunately, it can take years. In order to forgive, we must be in touch with our feelings. And this is, 
the part that I want to talk about in terms of what I think is, is worth 